you have surely heard about Azov, an eminent unit of the Ukrainian army that defended Mariupol for months despite complete Russian encirclement. How was it created, and is it really that hard to join? Why has Azov precisely become a prime enemy of Russian propaganda? Most importantly, does the regiment's story continue after the captivity on Azov style? Spoiler, it does. The year 2014. Russian troops enter Ukrainian Crimea. Russia starts a hybrid war against Ukraine. Large cities of eastern Ukraine are captured – Donetsk, Luhansk and Mariupol. The Ukrainian army is perplexed while the enemy seems capable of further advance. In response, Ukraine experiences a boom of volunteers willing to fight. People ready to defend their motherland instantly form new military units. This is when Azov starts shaping. In May 2014, a group of volunteers form a police battalion in the southeastern town of Berdyansk. It is named after the Azov Sea, which washes the southeast of Ukraine. In the beginning, this battalion counts 400 people. None of them are paid, most don't have combat experience, and nearly a half are students. There were balaclavas and go by the call signs instead of names. All because most of them came from the east of Ukraine, often having relatives who live in the cities captured by the Russian proxies. After a month of training, Azov advances toward the captured Mariupol, engaging in urban combat. Motivated Azov recruits fight to their full power. In one day, Azov liberates the city that many of its members call home. A unit that came out of nowhere, incredibly motivated, forced to hide its faces. How can Russia counter it? Of course, with some classical methods invented 80 years ago by Joseph Goebbels. Accuse the other side of that which you're guilty. That's when the Kremlin propaganda started depicting the Ukrainian army as bloodthirsty murderers and Nazis. Putin attacked Ukraine and occupied Crimea painlessly for the world. The same way Hitler did it with Austria in 1938. Kremlin propaganda didn't accept that regular Ukrainians could stand up to defend their country, so it repeated the narrative about Nazism again and again. In eight years, Putin has expanded this narrative to the entire Ukraine army, justifying the war with the necessity of denazification. A year after the full-scale invasion in 2022, Russian troops have not achieved a single objective and suffered several painful defeats. Great merit in ruining Russia's plans belongs to Azov, which has grown from a volunteer battalion of police to the National Guard Brigade, one of the fiercest combat units of our time. Since the year 2014, Azov has taken part in the major battles of the war in Donbass. British journalist Askolt Krushelnitsky has witnessed the formation and first fight of Azov. He has described the incredible motivation the fighters had from the very beginning. The morning routine at their base included 90 minutes of morning exercises and physical activity. Since then, the training has become even more demanding. Not everyone can join Azov. Similarly to the United States Marine Corps, Azov has an intense recruiting course. Those willing to join the unit have five weeks to prove their readiness to serve in Azov. 35 days of exhausting physical and mental tests make most people quit the training before it ends. The recruits don't have names. Before joining Azov, they only have a number on their hand. All they do is run, shoot, plant explosives, plan operations and learn tactical medicine. If they can keep up, they're in Azov. But it is only the beginning. Further on, every fighter chooses specialization. Artillery, tanks, sniping, reconnaissance, demining. This is when the half-year training of the actual Azov fighter starts. Main principle, every day at training, is another second lived through combat. In 2022, Russia planned to quickly capture the Azov Shard to form a land corridor to Crimea. It didn't go as planned, as the garrison of 4,500 defenders of Mariupol, half of which were from Azov, became an obstacle. 26 лютого 10 години ранку місто Маріуполь полк Азов разом з Збройними силами України, Національною гвардією та іншими силовими структурами надійно обороняє місто Маріуполь. Ми будемо битися до останньої каплі крові. Нам не страшні а не ворожі танки, а не ракетні удари, а не ворожа авіація. Я наказую кожному бійцю полку Азов 
відбитися до останнього. Ми будемо знищувати росіян у повітрі, на землі та на воді. Разом до перемоги. Слава Україні! Yet Russia sent an enormous amount of troops toward Mariupol. Russians advanced in a wide formation. However, Azov fighters had an advantage. For many of them, Mariupol was a hometown, so they knew the city exceptionally well. The stubborn resistance of the Ukrainians in Mariupol forced Russians to engage forces that were supposed to assault other cities in south and central Ukraine. Щодня захисники міста, перебуваючи в повному оточенні, мужньо та самовіддано б'ють ворога, знищують техніку, знищують генералів, офіцерів, солдат Російської Федерації. This was when the Russian army appealed to their Syrian strategy. Up to 100 aviation bombs were launched at Mariupol every day. Before the invasion, 430,000 people lived here. 80% of the buildings in the city were destroyed. Many of those buildings sheltered the civilians in the basements. Eventually, Azov retreated to Europe's biggest metallurgical plant, three times the size of New York's Central Park, the Azov Stahl. Along with them, more than 2,000 civilians found shelter on the three underground levels of the plant. Among them were hundreds of children who hadn't seen sunlight for months. We <laughs> After a few months under the siege, Azovstal, named after the sea just like Azov Regiment, remained the only place in Mariupol with the Ukrainian flag waving above it. Despite the colossal risk, Ukrainian helicopters roamed to the plant at low altitudes. They were evacuating the heavily injured and bringing ammunition in. However, after the fifth flight, some helicopters were struck down, and this small stream of aid was forced to stop. Volunteers from all over Ukraine formed a unit meant to breach into Mariupol and unblock Azov. We просто збирати людей, які можливо нас деблокують. Вот так я сказав, можливо. Тому що я розумів, що ми зараз почнемо збирати цивільних людей, які сильні духом, але не мають, на жаль, досвіду ведення бойових дій. However, several attempts to break through ran into the echelon defense of Russia. Але на той момент це вже затянулось досить довго, і лінія оборони противника була досить кріпко побудована. At the end of spring 2022, the Ukrainian command made a decision. The Mariupol garrison had accomplished its mission. New objective to save the lives of the defenders. Вище військове керівництво дало наказ про збереження життя та здоров'я військовослужбовців гарнізону та припинення оборони міста. The defenders of Mariupol ended up in Russian captivity. Putin promised to save their lives, but it was another Russian lie. On the night of July 28th, an explosion happened in the Olenivka settlement prison, where Azov fighters were held. More than 50 people died. CNN conducted an investigation proving that the Russians were responsible for the attack. Moscow did not allow the UN and Red Cross on the side of the tragedy. The world has learned the details of the incident from the Azov fighters released from captivity. In September 2022, 215 soldiers, including 108 Azov fighters, returned home after prisoner exchange. Commanders of Azov were exchanged to 55 Russian soldiers. By an agreement, they will stay in Turkey till the end of the war. The story of Azov continues. Just like back in 2014, motivated fighters stand up to defend their country again. All this time, veterans and recruits keep fighting. Азов не повертається, Азов нікуди не зникав. Сюрприз. Ми весь цей час воювали. Навіть коли ми були в полоні, Азов Азов воював. They continue fighting for their dream, the liberation of their homeland from the occupants. Що мотивує, що мотивує далі боротися? Тут, отсюда, 100 км до моєрного дому до Маріуполя. По чуть-чуть, по чуть-чуть, ми йдемо вперед. Я йду домой.